Hey, this is Danny Bonaduce, and you are listening to Sean Squad Society Podcast with your hosts, Cindy, Doris, and Dame. When you couldn't sleep, you went back to where the whale was since you were staying there at the Marine, I guess, Land Water Park. And you started making the whale do some of the same stunts that you watched all day. But then the next day, I think you got in trouble. Is that true? Got in trouble. I I did. I got in terrible trouble. They were actually going to kick us out of Marine Land because what happened was. Welcome to the Sean Squad Society Podcast with your hosts, myself, Cindy, Doris, Dame Madonna, where we invite you to share in our enthusiasm and reminisce about all things Sean Cassidy. From his teen idol days to his recent adventures back on the road again. Please join us for the stories and memories that connected us to those happy days that helped create the Sean Squad Society Podcast. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Sean Squad Society Podcast. Today, we have with us a very special guest. He started his career at about four years old. In the early years, he worked in movies with Elvis Presley. And by 10, he starred in his own TV sitcom, The Partridge Family. By the time The Partridge Family ended, he was the poster child for Child Actors Gone Bad. He got into a little trouble due to drugs and alcohol, and he started a new career starring on the cover of the National Enquirer. (laughs) After beating up a male prostitute, a local Chicago radio DJ found him and decided to call and make a radio bit of that incident. And that led to his very long and successful radio career. He recently retired from KZOK in Seattle due to health issues. Everybody, here he is, my friend, Danny Bonaducci. Welcome, Danny. Well, well, thank you, you guys. That was a hell of an intro. (laughs) Well, I've known you for 30 some odd years, and I didn't want to make it too bad, but I wanted to try to cover some of the highs and the lows and the in-betweens. All right. Well, I'm excited to do this. How many things are Sean Cassidy's? Well, you're right. (laughs) If you you narrow it down, actor, producer, singer. Writer. But, but, and writer. Yeah. Yeah, But, you know, we're going to stretch that and try to make a bunch of podcasts. Very interesting stories. And don't forget, there's a lot of fan stories in between there, too, that people don't know about yet. So we're going to bring that to light, too. All right. And uh, who does all this research to know all this stuff? Lots of research. We all research. We know a lot about you, Danny. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's a, a lot to know. But I will tell you this, that uh, Doris and I have been friends for, for over 30 years. But, yeah. you know, uh, I can, can I ask you a personal question, Doris? Yeah. When you go to a Sean Cassidy, are you the only black woman in the world that goes to see him? No, actually, I found out that there are like three of us. <laughs> there's three of you. Three of you. Right on, Doris. Well, that's very Ooh. cool. But you know yeah. what, Danny? We we have a tagline, and we we say we're the six degrees of Sean Cassidy. So it's anything remotely related. So you worked on a Partridge family with his mom and his brother, so you're like the six degrees of Sean Cassidy. That's right. Anything uh, remotely related. Oh, and I, I am remotely related, I guess. You're remotely related with six degrees. All right, cool. Exactly. All right. Do you guys ever talk to Sean Cassidy? Yes. All right. If you talk to him again, he one time mentioned to me, he said, you know what? David Cassidy, my brother, left you a jukebox that he once wanted you to have, and then he died, and now I have it. Do you want it? And I said, yeah, I want it. And that was the last of I heard of it. So if you talk to Sean Cassidy again, ask You know what? That's going to be my very next question to Sean on his Q&A. He does these Q&As with his fans on social media, and that will be my very next question. And he'll know I'm not making it up because it's going to be a legit question. It is a legit question. 
I know you can do it. And is it I, fully, I can't think of anything that you can't do. Is it fully loaded with songs already or what's in it? Uh, it's, it's fully mo- loaded with songs already. And I, hey. I am dying to hear it. There's, you know, uh, somebody just got uh, uh, John Lennon's jukebox and it was all loaded. And it told you a lot about the guy. So if we ever get my hands on the David Cassidy jukebox, I think that'll tell me a lot about my TV brother that I didn't know. But there's not yeah. that much about David Cassidy that I don't know. Sure, sure. Exactly. We know that you know a lot. You were right there with him when he passed away. But all the way up until then, you did a TV show with him. You got in concerts. He brought you on the road with him, for God's sake. Uh, you know, I, I got to tell you that uh, David... He called me up, I don't know, was it 94 or something like that? And I had been arrested for who knows what that year. I was getting arrested a lot for a while. And uh, David said, listen, man, I want to go on tour with you. I want to take you on tour with me. Will we get in the tour bus? We'll drive around. We'll do shows together. And I said, that's great. And he said, but here's the thing. You got to agree to this. There are no drugs, no alcohol, no cigarettes, and no women. And I said, well, I'm not going. That's the <laughs> stupidest thing I ever heard of. Why would I go? I've been waiting my whole life to go on uh, a concert with you, and now there's no women, no drugs, and no alcohol. I am not going. But I decided to go, and it was like the best decision I ever made. Yeah, Danny, I saw you and, and David at a show, uh, say, around 1990-ish in Chicago. You were with him at that time. Okay. He had that long, leather, fringy jacket. I don't know if you had the crushed velvet on at that time or not, but it was around 1990. So you think it started then? Uh, yeah, I guess I was wrong about the year. It started that. That would be the first year we did, 1990. Yep. Mm-hmm. So cool. Yeah, so I got to see one of those shows. Um, you know what? Hey, something else about David with you, Danny, is that David said that you're the funniest guy in the world. And he never wanted you to be the joke, though, because he knew who you really were. You know, that funny guy. So... Were you in the room? Because that is exactly what he said to me. That is exactly what he said to me. And it was very complimentary. Yeah, it was super cool. It was super cool. Here's the big thing he said. He said, by the end, if you straighten up and you you go into these radio interviews with me in the morning, you will have a job before this tour ends. And I said, man, I I have a bad reputation, David. I don't think anybody's going to hire me. And sure enough, by the end of the tour, I had been. Uh, I was given a job at uh, Eagle 106 in Philadelphia doing mornings. Uh, no, I was just part of another show. It was called uh, John Lander and the Nut Hut, and I was one of his nuts, apparently. Um, <laughs> so uh, I started doing that, and sure enough, in Chicago, right around 90, I guess it was, uh, or maybe a little later, uh, I got a job full-time, and I'm that radio station, the, what was it called? Oh, well, it was called The Loop in Chicago. The Loop, yes. Uh, I ended up doing Johnny mornings, middays, afternoons, and nights. Yeah. That was a cool mm-hmm. gig. That was a great gig. Brand Meyer? Yeah. Uh, Brand Meyer in the mornings, yeah. absolutely. Brand- yeah, but hey, David, he just really loved you. Not only did he love you, he respected you. And Sean, this is the six degrees, Sean called you just to say that David thought of you as one of his other brothers. That's, yep. that's essentially correct. That That is, in fact, correct. And, you know, David and I were really close. There was uh, just a respect there. And, you know, I wanted him to do so well post-Partridge family. And, you know, he had a wild time. And I don't know exactly what is up there, but he, you know, he had a wild ride. And I thought, and I think everybody can agree here, David Cassidy died, what, like 20 years too soon. Yes. Uh, he could have been doing incredible stuff. And most people don't know what a what a musician he was. He's just so good on his guitar, and you know nobody sang like David Cassidy. And I thought I thought he should have had gold records again. And unfortunately, we'll never get to know if I was right or not. Yeah, he was recording actually in Chicago before he passed away. He was recording his father's songs here in Chicago, so that was right. meaningful. That's pretty cool. Hey, what you said too was that Elvis may have left the building when he passed away. But he went ahead and he left the door open and let David come in. Mm. Did I say that? That's genius, mm-hmm. man. <laughs> <laughs> Dame is our resident researcher. So if there's a quote, she knows it. And if you if she said that you said it, you said it. You said right it. On. Yep. Enough for me. <laughs> My part is that you're the cutest little boy with the best expressions in, in the show of the Partridge family. But also, I read this in my research. In school, you may have been the genius and the gifted child, but you also had the most swat. And I'm a teacher. I have taught school for over 30 years. So when I read about you, I crack up and laugh. Yeah, I no, think it's a I, cute I way. That. 
I remember mm-hmm. Dr. Uh, Arnez, I think was his name, the principal of our school. Uh, yeah, he had this big paddle, and that was when you could still paddle, kids. And, you know, I got to tell you, though, I could be mad at but I'm not. I fully deserve it. And I only went to school, <laughs> regular school, till the fifth grade. And by the fifth grade, I had, a, uh, I had gotten, I don't know, 68 swats or something like that. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and he kept going. Still are the genius. And I thought it was really neat that, you know, when they had you take your history test, a teacher had you take a test and you could just, what is it called when you don't even have to read about it? You just know the answers. You just knew everything. And so you could get through that way. But with your English teacher, you had to make sure that she knew that you wrote the book yourself and that your sister didn't help you because earlier your sister had helped you do some of your English work. And so what I thought was really funny when reading your pieces of your book that you planned on opening your diploma with a blank piece of paper inside of it. And when you saw where you did get the official diploma, you had like the biggest smile. So I thought that was adorable too. Well, thanks. Yeah. We, um, Cal prep is where I went to school and it was, it was literally mayhem. Uh, a lot of celebrities, Michael Jackson went to school with me. Uh, yeah, a, bunch I heard of people, that. Uh, a bunch of people went to school with me. And, uh, uh, you, you know, by the time I got to Cal prep, um, which is where I went to high school, I, I, my sister agreed to do all my work. I don't know why. And I didn't have anything on her. She's a nice girl. Um, but yeah, she did most of my English work. And one time she, she wrote a paper and I should have read it first, but I was so confident. Suicide, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Um, suicide. What's that? Yes. Uh, she wrote a paper called God doesn't live on Weddington street. And it was full of references to killing yourself. And I, I, I didn't read them. The guy got called into my teacher's office. He said, Danny, I, I want you to know, um, if you're having any kind of problem, you need somebody to talk to. My door is always open. And I thought, wow, this is the weirdest thing. So I yeah. read the paper. I wrote, hey, man, this thing reeks of suicide. I may be bumming, but I'm not killing myself, for God's <laughs> sake. That was the last time my sister did my work for me. <laughs> oh, good old Cecilia. And that's why I was cute about your book. Yeah. Got Thank you. I enjoyed sisters. writing that book. I enjoyed writing that book. It was a lot of fun. Hey, Dane, mm-hmm. didn't you tell me just the other day you were reading a book and you found something very interesting in the book? Well, there were two things that were interesting. I'll come back to the other one, but but this is what I thought was hilarious. I, You know, I was reading big pieces, bits, bits and pieces of your book and just laughing to myself thinking, oh, okay, I could see this as a teacher. He would still like me because, you know, I'm always uh, friendly with my students, but I have these new friends here on the podcast. Well, I'm just reading your book. I'm reading this part and it says, Doris, and I'm like, Doris? Uh, no way, but it described her just like who she is. It said a tall black girl who also hmm, was a Partridge family fan, which I know she's a huge fan. And I hear her talk about you all the time, but I was thinking, no, that can't be. Huh? Well, he said she was only one of his friends at that time that really stood out as not being a psychopath or something. And I was like, oh, okay, no. that's... Wait, let me just explain that a little bit. Doris okay. is a full-blown psychopath. Don't say oh, no. a Doris is one of the craziest women I know. But that's, that's funny. That's why I love her so much. But yeah, mm-hmm. you can't you can't make her not dangerous, man. <laughs> I love Doris, but don't make her mad. <laughs> but I couldn't believe it was about her. I was like, yeah. there's no way. Yeah, I called Doris, and I could yeah. not get a hold of her. So I started thinking, hmm, okay, if I can't call Doris, I'm going to call Cindy. So I called Cindy, and Cindy said, yeah, Dame, I think it's about Doris. I said, no, there's no way it can be about Doris. That <laughs> was hilarious. So, For our listeners who haven't read the book, I'm going to give you just a two-second synopsis of what Dame was talking about. Our friend Brian Forster, who played little Chris Partridge, was in town in Chicago with Danny for our semi-partridge family reunion. Brian made the mistake of telling Danny he was still a virgin. I show up at a personal appearance. I give Danny the eye. Danny introduces me to Brian. And, well. <laughs> you went for a ride. We went That's for a I ride read. in the limousine, and yeah. Brian came back a minute. Right. Hilarious. So Hilarious. That was, we had a good There's laugh. There's another part of your book that is so funny. And... As a teacher, 
I'll tell you which part that is after a little bit, unless I can do it now. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. Whatever you say. Well, um, this part of your book I thought was hilarious because it's the episode where it's called Whatever Happened to Moby Dick. And in the show, I could just picture you doing a retake, retake, retake. And you being a genius boy that you are, you memorize how to get the whale to do certain tricks. So in the middle oh. of the night, when you couldn't sleep, you went back to where the whale was since you were staying there at the marine, I guess, land water park. And you started yeah. making the whale do some of the same stunts that you watched all day. But then the next day, I think you got in trouble. Is that got true? Got in trouble. I, I, I did. I got in terrible trouble. They were actually going to kick us out of the marine land because what happened was the, the whale does these things because he gets food at the end. And I didn't have any food. So I just kept mm -hmm. doing these tricks with him until he got <laughs> mad and stopped doing the tricks. And then the next day during a show, he would not respond. He would not do any tricks at all. And the next night I went out to do it again. They caught me and they threatened to kick the Partridge family out of the marina. Can you oh imagine the reputation we'd have gotten if the Partridge family got kicked out of a fish show? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God, Danny. Yeah. That would not have gone over well. <laughs> uh, no, it did not, Doris. Shirley wouldn't have had her solo uh, with that yeah. then. Can you imagine if Well Song never got recorded? Oh. That yeah. that would have uh, been what I could happened. Go, I could go all day without hearing that whale song. Oh, I just heard it uh, yesterday. Oh, no. I love on it. On the last radio show I did, they insisted on anytime anything aquatic showed up, they played that song. And believe me, it is not one of my favorites. Along with, here's another one, not my favorite. Point me in the direction of Albuquerque. <laughs> I don't know why we don't know the way to Albuquerque. We got GPS, for God's <laughs> sake. And why anybody would want to go to Albuquerque? I've been to Albuquerque. It's not that great. Nothing's there. Except that girl that got lost or whatever. <laughs> With her right. guitar. Yeah, that, that was not one of my favorites no. either. Yeah. I think on that subject, that didn't you want to ask Danny what his something Cindy about his favorite? I don't know. Do you have a favorite episode of the Partridge Family? Yeah, I do. And I have a favorite line, as a matter of fact. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Vic Tayback was in this episode. Uh, the guy who ended up doing... Uh, Alice. The name of that show. Alice. Yeah, yes, he yeah, was no. Mel. <laughs> Yeah, he was not. Boy, you know your stuff, Doris. Anyway, in the episode, which is about a gangster thinking his, oh, 35-year-old super sexy girlfriend is actually <laughs> cheating on him with Danny Partridge. Yes. He doesn't know that I'm 10 years old. Yes. And at one point, he grabs me, he, he and his uh, accomplice pick me up in the air. I'm wearing, I'm wearing a duck floaty. Yes. I'm going to go swimming, and apparently yeah. I don't know how to swim. And he picks me up, and he says, you know what's going to happen if you don't do this, kid? And I said, no, what? And he just mushes the Mush head your, of my duck. And duck. Do I'm, I was <laughs> yes. like, yes, you're squeezing my duck, sir. And <laughs> that's that. my favorite episode by far. I want to talk with you. I think you gentlemen probably want somebody else. Let me get the desk group for you. Hey, 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 we got a message for you, Partridge. Now you listen good. You're squeezing my duck, sir. <laughs> the messages, stay away from LeVon Laverne. But why? That and part was cute. You're so cute. Hilarious. Later in the scene, Danny goes, he squeezed my duck. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. That was beautiful. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I, I do remember that part. That, that was a yeah. great episode. I got to tell you, we all have our favorites. My favorite was when you guys got lost and wound up. I have two favorites. Mine were when you guys got lost and wound up in Detroit, and there was Richard Pryor and all those guys. That's just such a good episode because I love the song. And I just thought, you know, seeing all these great comedians before they were huge, it was a great episode. And then he, my other oh. favorite was when, uh, yeah. when Lori met up with Anthony Geary, who was a priest or a minister or something on that show. And Shirley thought yeah. Lori went off to get married to the minister. I like that episode because it features the song Sunshine, and that is probably my favorite part. One of mine, too. Probably. Right. So. Which, which, wait, which song is Sunshine? How's it go? Got, got the, the sun shine in my hands. You, you got, got the, the sun shine in your hands. We got, got the sun shine in our hands. In my hands, and shine that's all, all I know of this song. You got the sun shine. Sun, shine in my hands. You got the sun, shine in my hands. 
<laughs> you got to know that song. <laughs> I'm going to give you guys kind of an exclusive, if anybody cares this time. Yeah. Uh, going to an 11 o'clock service at the Catholic Church down the road. So I'm going to have to split soon. So fire me some quick questions. Oh, I okay. got Partridge Family trivia that I want to give. I wrote these questions up for trivia. Yeah. All right. So number one, what was Shirley Part? Oh, this is for Doris and Danny. Both of you can answer for this. Okay. I'm sure Danny knows these, <laughs> but we'll see. You know, on one of my on one of my late television shows, uh, we brought up an uh, an audience member who said they're a big fan of Partridge Family. And we played a trivia game, and that guy totally, totally won. So oh. I will not be surprised if Doreen walks away with this. All right, question okay. number one. All right, there's ten of them. One is, what was Shirley Partridge's job before joining the group? She uh, worked at the she, bank. Yes. She worked at the bank. Bank teller. Is that true? Yes, All true. Right, one for Doreen. One for <laughs> one Doreen. For Doris. All right, the second one is, in the episode Soul Club, what was the venue name that the family played at? The Firehouse. The Palladium. Nope. Not the firehouse? Uh, nope. It's called Soul Ooh. Club. <laughs> oh. It was in the question. <laughs> okay. It was there. Okay. Right, no- come on, give me another one. Number three, what was the name of the high school that Keith Partridge attended? San Pueblo High. Oh, God, high. I don't remember. What San, was it? San Pe- Pueblo High. Well, I think it's San Pueblo High, too, but when I looked it up, it said Westridge High. So which one's correct? The one Doree said? Yeah, that's what I think. I know Sam Plebo. I never heard Westridge mentioned. I, no, I never that's heard cool. it before. So that's two to nothing, Doree. Okay. All right. Uh, number Next one. What did Farrah Fawcett drop out of her bag in her scene in the first season? My heart. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, Danny, you were eye to eye with her chest. I could tell in the episode. So I know what you were looking at. I, I was. You know. <laughs> All three of the Char- original Charlie's Angels were on the Partridge family before they were angels. Yes, that's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Really. Can I get half a point for doing that? Yeah, you can have yeah. a whole point for doing that one. Wow. So nobody Thank knows? You, I have no idea. You don't know either? It's a soap powder box. Like detergent. It's a what? Soap powder oh, box. Oh. So we're only going to do one more. We're going to do five. Oh, okay, because I got some good okay. ones here. Okay, well, maybe six. I could go through real quick. Jodie Foster made a guest appearance on The Partridge Family, as we all know. What was the name of the episode? Oh, I don't know, but she punched me in the eye. I remember that. I know. I thought she punched you in the arm, or was that the other love interest you had? Danny can't keep <laughs> up with Jodie Foster. I don't know. The 11-year itch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's because yeah. I was 11 years old? Is that the thing? Yeah. I uh, probably... Here we go. Hang on a second. Hang on. A second. Who played her dad? Burke Convy. Burke Convy. Damn it, Doris. Why do you know everything? Because I'm. <laughs> we're both fanatics. Fans. Yeah, we're both part of fanatics. He was also in the whale episode, too. But I have a line that Cindy loves. I have a lot of useless information living rent free in my head. <laughs> yes, yes. Yep. Oh, yep. Okay. All right. Hey, All right. Hey, Danny. Be- yeah. Before you, before you go. Can you tell me if this is true? Are you an ordained online minister? Yep, absolutely. I've married over no 100 way. couples. Yep, way. That's amazing. Yeah. Yep. Okay, wait, I got to well, do like- this funny one. This funny one that we have is in the episode where Shirley and Lori go camping and hiking. Oh, I love what- that. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of the wilderness site that they went to? What was that site name? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Muldoon's Point? No, that's where you make out at. They went camping oh, wow. here. I don't know. The Girl I, I Scouts. Know. The Girl Scouts found Danny right. and Keith and Ruben all over the ground, laying there with bandages, and yes. they were like five mile, five yards from the Girl Scouts. Yes, there's a follow question to this one. So yes, you're on the right track, but you don't know where the site is they no, went to. No, I don't know. It was called Pinnacle Peak. Okay. Oh, I remember Pinnacle Peak. For God's sake, Pete. All right, yeah. two more, and then I got to go to church. For okay. God's sake. What? What? I, literally, for God's sake. <laughs> ah, kill Danny. The minister needs to go. Good line. Yeah. And what did Danny pack in his suitcase when going to Pinnacle Peak to look for mom and Lori? Well, he did. He, he Somebody brought a guitar. Nobody brought well, the can opener. That was and deep. Ruben had to beat the can with a rock. I laughed so yes. hard. Didn't have a can opener. But what did Danny have in his suitcase? I don't know. A uh, compass. No. no food. No. A can of beans. You don't know what you packed in your suitcase? Nah, we don't know. Socks, shorts, rubber ducky, and hankies. <laughs> uh, wow. I'm, a well, I'm always prepared. That rubber okay, ducky follows one. you. Here we go. 
All right. What was the name of the lost album design? We had a we had a thing about John Aaron Miller on hey. this one. Yeah, I have no I have no idea. You don't know the lost album design? It was uh, it was hilarious. It was called TV dinner. Yes. And you guys said for <laughs> sticking up out of the pork chops and the mashed yes. potatoes, and it was weird. Yes, hilarious. We had a hey, good Cindy. Laugh. Yeah. Speaking speaking of albums, I think it would be really cool to find one of those albums that Danny and Amy um, saw in the like vintage store. Yeah, he goes in there and he just signs them. We well, gotta go looking like, for him, Dane. Uh, Danny does them secretly. He signs them, and then you have to go look for him. Right, I'll go look. But, and no, you don't. I'll be happy to send you one. Uh, oh, cool. my number. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll have to find one. I don't know where I can find. But anyway, all right, kids. And Doris, this is for you. Never been done before. All right, here, 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 here. Yeah. Doris, I think I love you. So <laughs> oh, I'm not so afraid of. Oh, I think I that's love nice. You. All right, kids. I'm up the church. That was so much fun. Danny Wasn't that fun? So hilarious. So good to talk to him. He's so funny. He's so funny. He just retired from his radio show that he hosted in Seattle with his co-host Sarah. It was called the Danny Bonaducci and Sarah Morning Show. And due to his health, he felt he wanted to move to Palm Springs and just be with his wife. And that's what he did. You realize Danny worked in Chicago. Danny lived here for a few years. He worked for a major radio station in Chicago called The Loop. They were WLUP. That's right. He was here for a little while with The Loop. I remember that with Johnny B. There was an incident that happened and he had Danny on his show. I'm sure everybody remembered that. And that's how his radio career started. Yeah, Johnny B called Danny up because of a little trouble he got into with, um, uh, let's just say, a working person. And Danny got in trouble for slapping this person yes. and uh, <laughs> broke his nose, I yes. think, and wound up in jail. And Johnny B thought the whole thing was funny. And for those of you who don't know, Johnny B is Jonathan Brammeyer. Brammeyer right. And he was uh, he was huge in Chicago back in the day. And he found that whole thing funny as heck. And he called Danny and wanted to do a little radio thing on it. Yeah, I think I barely remember that, too. Yeah, and it went over so well. I guess it went over so well that Johnny went up to the big people and said, hey, we need to get this guy on the air Mm -hmm. in Chicago. And that's how it started. Yep, they kind of clicked, you know, kind of just everything fell into place, I guess. Yeah, he came to Chicago, he talked to everybody, and they offered him the job, and he really didn't start off at the top. Danny came here working at night, overnight, I think. I think he worked himself through every shift on the loop. Yes. His baby was born. Isabella was born. In Chicago. Uh, In Chicago, and I think that's why they bought the house. When he lived in the city... Uh, I think they needed more room. Mm -hmm. And she was born, fun fact, she was born Thanksgiving week of that year. So you know how Thanksgiving moves. Mm -hmm. The year she was born, it was Thanksgiving week. Oh, okay. She's a turkey baby. uh, Then uh, he moved out of Chicago. Yeah, he moved to the Burbs. Yeah. But he did, he stayed here for a while. He worked himself from that graveyard shift to the nighttime. Mm Mm-hmm. Then he got really big on his afternoon shift. That's where he really started getting a lot of listeners. Right. And it it was um I I followed him all the way from the whole time, and it was during his afternoon shift something else big happened while he was living here in Chicago. What was that? Has has to do with Donny Osmond. Oh, the fight, <laughs> the fight. <laughs> Him and Donny Osmond fighting, that's like, that's like salt and pepper, cold and hot. <laughs> Total opposite. Because then, you know, Danny has this way of just spitting it out, right? He'll just say it. Right. And one day he was on the air and he made some remark about Marie Osmond. Mm. And Donny did not. Oh, like I'm sure. It. Well, Danny and Donny worked out at the same gym. And when Danny showed up that day, Donnie got all in his face and said, I will kick your ass and this and that. <laughs> and then he said, name the place and the time. And they well, did. <laughs> the, rest, the rest is history. The rest is history. And who won that fight? 
<laughs> it was really poor Donnie. That's all I could say. Yeah, poor Donnie. He's a lover, no, not a fighter. Not. Yeah. <laughs> and I think Donnie, I honestly believe Donnie thought the whole thing was going to be just an uh, uh, exhibition. Right. But Danny was taking the thing seriously. Oh, of course. Yes. And he went in there and he plummeted poor Donnie. And Donnie was like, hey, I really didn't think this was going to be for real, for real. <laughs> and he and, found and, out. You know, Donnie was here. The only reason Donnie was here in Chicago, he had that really long uh, stint playing Joseph. Right. And Joseph and the amazing Technicolor dream coat. So, so they're both in town. And then after yeah, Chicago, they, Danny went to Detroit. Yeah, they offered him a job in Detroit mm -hmm. because his boss moved. They offered his boss a job to move to Detroit to run a, a radio station there. Mm -hmm. And and Miss Larry Wirt said, hey, Danny, you want to move to Detroit with me? And then he said, sure, <laughs> Mr. Wirt. And that's where they landed, in Detroit. And that's where they, WKQI. Yeah, and you know what's funny? Mm -hmm. Danny worked two jobs at that time. He was on the air in Detroit, and he did a remote time for his afternoon show. But that wasn't going well. People could tell it really wasn't. At that time, technology wasn't as great. And people could tell he wasn't there live and everything. So they, it just ended. He just kind of quit and worked only in Detroit. Yeah. But then also, too, in 98, he was the morning show host for New York City's big 105 WBAX for a brief period. Yeah, he moved all around. He did. He, he left Chicago, went to Detroit, wound up in New York. But I think after New York, he he maybe was in Philly or something, but he landed in L.A. Mm -hmm. And I always say, I have a little saying, forgive me, Danny, but I'm going to say it. I, I made Bonaduce a verb. Like <laughs> when you work your way up to something. Right. I said, I always say now, you Bonaduce your way back into the limelight because you know danny had fallen he was the poster child oh for yes. bad. and his whole goal was i think to get himself back in la and be a star yeah and so i have this little saying you bonna do cheat yourself right back to la <laughs> and then from and la went to seattle right yeah yeah i think co-hosted the morning show no not from L.A. to Seattle. He did. He he was in Philly. That's when he landed in Philly. Okay. So he did his share of moving around. He did all kinds of radio. Right. And then, then his last stop was Seattle. That was he. He stayed there for a long time. Eleven years. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, his co-host on KZOK in Seattle was his co-host on his station in Philly. Okay. When they offered him the job. In Seattle, he said, hey, Sarah, you want to come to Seattle? And she said, sure, <laughs> Danny, I'll go. And oh. they loaded up the truck and moved to Seattle. Oh, and there they stayed. Yeah. And that was in Palm Springs. Yeah, he wouldn't have left. He would have stayed, but his health got bad. Right. And his words, I'm going to paraphrase, but he basically said he wants to be around, live life with his wife. And so he's like that scared him so much mm -hmm. that he wants to enjoy the days that he can hold in his wife's hand, taking walks, doing the things he can do. And they moved to Palm Springs and they're having a ball. Yeah. Why not retire and enjoy life and move to Palm Springs? Yeah, people don't know. Tell them, tell them the uh, condition Danny suffered. Um, hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is an accumulation of the fluid in the brain. He had some symptoms of, he was imbalanced. So they weren't sure what it was and found out that he had this hydrocephalus, some abnormal accumulation of fluid on the brain. So they did put a yeah. stent in and he's doing good now. Yep. Us common folk call it water on the brain. <laughs> water on the brain. Water on the brain. Yeah. It could be caused by many different things, but you know, the, the solution is to get that stent in and get that fluid out of there until they can figure out, you know, what was causing it. So I'm glad he's doing better now. He's so much better. He is. As we just heard. As we just heard, he's he sounded so great. <laughs> yeah. And you know what else Danny did besides radio, hmm. Cindy? Well. He did TV. Well, I remember the Partridge family. Yeah. 
<laughs> Nobody can forget and the Partridge family. <laughs> little Danny Partridge. No, we will never forget that. Yeah. But he actually dabbled in uh, talk shows. Oh, he yeah. Talk I remember that. Host. Yes. When he lived here in Chicago, yeah, he had a show called Danny. Danny. Exclamation Ex- point. Exclamation point. <laughs> Excitement, Danny. <laughs> yes. And uh, it was it was pretty good. He ran for a couple of years on that show. And I was actually in the audience for uh, uh, the episode. They were doing uh, calendars. You know how you sell pinup calendars, at least back mm-hmm. in the day. These Hooter girls and firemen were posing and they did these calendars yeah. and they were selling them for charity. Oh, okay. And th- this whole thing was on this episode of Danny and I was sitting in the audience. Now, you know how shy I can be, right? So- oh, yes. Real shy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sitting in the audience and one of this very hunky firemen was standing there posing and they were taking audience questions. So then he goes, hey, my friend Doris has a question. And they come to me with the mic. And I said, hey, I'd like to ask that fireman on the end if he has a very big hose. And if so, can I see it? <laughs> they went straight to commercial. I guess that was a no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, the director went straight to commercial. <laughs> As they should. <laughs> As they should. The most funny, funny thing about it, the funniest thing about that, I was at work maybe a month or five, six weeks later because they recorded them so far in advance. Yeah. So I worked uh, in downtown Chicago in a high rise building and I was walking around the building doing something I probably wasn't working. Mm-hmm. And I was strolling around one of the floors and this guy came up to me. And he goes, hey, didn't I just see you on Danny Bonaducci's show asking the fireman to see his hose? I pushed the <laughs> elevator button, jumped on and said, nope, wasn't me. And the door shut. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I couldn't believe I'm at my job and somebody saw that. And you have a whole story was- now. <laughs> yep. Oh, so my goodness. No wonder Danny loves you so much. There's so, <laughs> so many I, stories. I, I just can't help myself. Danny and I, I think I come from the same cloth. We just say stuff. Yes. We just do. Yes. Yeah. But fun, but fun stories. As long as you don't hurt I, anybody. Exactly. Right. You know what Danny's most notorious thing was? Oh, breaking Bonaduce. Yes. I kind of remember watching that, but it didn't turn out well. <laughs> No, it didn't. It it was a hit. The show itself was a hit, but it really was a, a train wreck. Right. Danny kept doing stuff that really wasn't that. I told you he just says and does anything. So right. breaking by Naduchi, he was living in L.A. Him and his wife were going through a hard time. They were, they were seeing a therapist and all kinds of things, a marriage counselor, I think. And Danny was drinking a lot. Yeah. And it just was not a good thing. Right. He kept getting in trouble. That seemed to follow him through his life. That was his thing. And he was in trouble back then. And I remember one of the episodes, he was sitting on the ground with a bottle of alcohol, holding it, drinking it out of a bag on a curb in L.A. I'm like, Danny, really? And oh, he, he also, in another episode, he had, uh, you know, those little dog collars uh, for electronic fences, fences. Yes. To keep your dog from crossing the little uh, the line. shock collar. Yeah. Shock collar. Then he put that on his two year old son oh, no. and, and then walked his son over to the fence and, and put him in to see what was happen. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. It was just, I'm like, I'm like, oh my God. Now I'm going to tell you, Danny has many times said breaking by Naduchi was not his finest moment and he's not very proud of right. it. Right. So, so yeah, that was um, the, the shows that I know 
that he did the kind of most people are uh, most familiar most familiar with. with. Yes, right. Otherwise, he had you know various spots on other shows. You know, just guest starring on him and things like that. But mm-hmm. yeah, but he yeah he had a he had a long career, a very long career. Like you said, he guest starred on a lot of uh, TV shows. He did uh, numerous times on that '70s show. Right. They, they liked him so much they brought him on. He did the uh, CSI a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, he was on Chips. He just did a lot of different shows, guest stars. Yeah. And did you know that he was honored by the Young Artist Foundation, the former Child Star Life Achievement Award for his role? No, I didn't know that. Okay. Oh, they talk about the Partridge family. The series ran for four seasons from 1970 to 74. And in 2003, Bonaducci was honored by the Young Artist Foundation with its former child star life achievement award for his role in the series. So well, that is so cool. Yeah. For the Partridge family. Do you believe that? That's great. He no. should be proud of that. I don't know if he remembers it. <laughs> uh, the only thing Danny talks about is he wants his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He makes that clear every chance he gets. Yes. That's that's all he ever talks about. Well, you never know, Danny. Oh, yeah, Could happen. Yeah, you never know. You never know. Could come up. But in the meantime, he's enjoying Palm Springs with his wife, which I, I think is great. Yes, he is. And we wish him the best. Yes, always. And and I hope that we get him back soon. That's a that's a good time yes. with Danny. More time, more life. It was so fun having him on the episode today. We're so glad to have him. You know, he's always got something funny to say. So glad everybody was able to join so, us today for our uh, season three opener episode. So thanks for listening, everyone. And make sure to join us back here next time. Thank you from the bottom of our Teen Dream Hearts. Keep on crushing. Always believe in magic. And have a peaceful, fantastic week. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Thread, and subscribe to our new YouTube page. Make sure to keep in touch with us at our email, Society at gmail.com. The Sean Squad Society podcast, including past, present, and future versions, and its contents are owned and controlled by the Sean Squad Society. The podcast is written, produced, and recorded at the Borden Studios, and the views and opinions are solely those of the Sean Squad Society podcast. We may think we are always right, but we may get things wrong from time to time, so we assume no responsibility for errors of submission of content.